You've heard of Big Pharma, but have you heard of Big Big Pharma? <laughs> New documents reveal pharmaceutical company Moderna's alleged attempt to control the debate around COVID-19 vaccines during the, the coronavirus pandemic. The Moderna misinformation reports by journalists Lee Fong and Jack Polson reveal what the pharmaceutical company was willing to do to shape public discourse around COVID vaccines and affect policymaking. Joining us now to discuss his latest reporting is investigative journalist and contributing editor at Unheard, Lee Fong. Hello, Lee. Hey. Tell us what we need to know about this story. Well, this is an exclusive look at internal Moderna documents that show a sprawling effort to monitor basically everything said online, on social media and in the news media about vaccine policy, um, COVID policy, about Moderna and other vaccine companies. Um, they employ a uh, artificial intelligence firm that is continuously monitoring and sentiment monitoring uh, millions of different uh, discussions and tweets and posts and Facebook posts um, all around the world um, discussing this topic. And what's particularly interesting, I think, about this story is that uh, Moderna is working with uh, NGOs, including Public Good Projects, uh, this anti-misinformation NGO, to classify and push back against alleged vaccine misinformation, where this is potentially problematic is that if you look closely at these misinformation reports, uh, it, they are clearly blurring the line between uh, fighting actual uh, disinformation, you know, intentional lies and classifying legitimate points of discussion around vaccine policy um, as, you know, this is as dangerous misinformation. So, you know, they're, they're, they're taking kind of a broad brush and painting any kind of criticism of their company of uh, vaccines, of, of any discussion um, as, as dangerous misinformation. And can you clarify, you know, what the tools of their monitor, what, what form the moderate, mo monitoring took? So obviously, I mean, they're a large company. They, there's nothing to, I mean, stop them, I guess, from, you know, searching for what the trending topics are and what the discussion is like on social media. Um, how, to what extent did it go beyond that? Well, look, we know from uh, a separate batch of documents, uh, the Twitter files um, that, that I reported earlier this year, that the same partners that are working with Moderna, uh, PGP and some of these other NGOs, had a direct line to Twitter's um, executives. And they also worked with uh, Google and Facebook to shape content moderation policies. To, they were actually sending entire Excel documents with tweets that they wanted censored. Um, some of these tweets were, you know, genuine misinformation, claiming that you know the vaccines would implant a microchip into patients. You know that's obviously not true. But many of the tweets were um, genuine points of disagreement around coercive vaccine policy. You know, there's a discussion around vaccine passports. Um, that's something that both public health and civil liberties experts have pushed back upon. Um, that was classified as misinformation by these Moderna funded partners. And uh, these NGOs were uh, pressuring the social media companies to change their content moderation policies, to delete and to de-amplify uh, some of these tweets that were critical of uh, coercive vaccine policies. And in addition, we looked at these documents from Moderna and they are using these misinformation reports to train 45,000 uh, American healthcare professionals, these are doctors and, and nurses around the country, um, so that they are uh, interacting with patients and uh, pushing back against alleged misinformation. Again, some of these areas of, of, of alleged misinformation are simply tweets that are critical of, of vaccine companies. You write in your article that one of the people who was specifically flagged was Russell Brand, uh, who was, quote, suspected of uh, uh, being targeted for his, quote, anti-vaccine beliefs uh, because he made the claim that Moderna and Pfizer made, quote, $1,000 of profit every second. Um, he was a uh, high-risk uh, figure that was flagged. What were the implications of that? Was there any follow-through? What control did Moderna have over, say, um, the exposure the public had to Russell Brand? 
brand, whether or not any videos were pulled, uh, whether or not there was any algorithmic changes or any algorithmic changes that would have limited people's access to his videos on YouTube and the like. I mean, how did those flags translate into implications for the people who were flagged? You know, that, that's a good question, Bri. I, I don't know the full extent of Moderna's uh, role, if, if they had any, in terms of demonetizing or censoring Russell Brand. Of course, in the last two months, given these uh, sexual misconduct allegations, uh, Russell Brand has uh, faced a lot of um, different changes to his YouTube channel and to uh, other platforms in, in which uh, he, he produces content. But what is clear is that if you look closely at these reports produced by Moderna, uh, the alleged misinformation that Russell Brand engaged in was nothing of the sort. Um, the, the company flagged Russell Brand as a vaccine critic and as an example of why he's a dangerous spreader of misinformation. They quoted him saying that uh, Pfizer and Moderna at the height of the pandemic were making $1,000 a profit uh, every minute, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. That's not misinformation. That's um, an approximation of uh, pharmaceutical profits that was calculated by the uh, nonprofit group Oxfam. Um, this was widely cited in The Guardian, The New York Times. Um, you know, I've, I've cited that those studies. Uh, that's simply criticizing the pharma companies for not sharing the intellectual property, the patents to create a generic version of the, of the vaccine to, to make it more broadly accessible. Uh, this was criticizing big pharma for hoarding uh, the vaccine technology and uh, taking advantage of this pandemic to produce billions of dollars of profit. That's not misinformation. That's that's actually the truth. Yeah, time and time again, it seems like um, Moderna and you know, aspects of our national um, health, public health policy in government uh, were interested in policing not actual literal misinformation, but merely disagreement about what the policies around vaccines should be and who should be profiting from them. No, that's right. I and mean, you look at many of these Moderna misinformation reports, they're flagging people who are simply critical of uh, vaccine mandates. I mean, these, this is a, a very controversial policy. We, we look kind of retrospectively, they weren't, these mandates were not successful in increasing vaccination rates. They got tens of thousands of Americans uh, fired or pushed out of their jobs. Um, these were controversial policies that were eventually overturned by the Supreme Court. Um, this is not a, an area of misinformation that needed to be censored. This was a legitimate area of public debate around a very controversial and novel application of public policy that benefited uh, just a small number of corporations, basically the government forcing you uh, to, to buy a certain product and to use it in your, in your body. I mean, this is a bod bodily autonomy issue, uh, a public health er area that deserved actually much more scrutiny, not less. And I, just to give you kind of a, a backdrop for these issues, um, unlike Pfizer, Moderna was a, you know, a startup with no uh, approved products before the pandemic. Their vaccine uh, catapulted them into a international behemoth. Um, their valuation in 2021 uh, zoomed up to over a hundred billion dollars. The the pandemic minted five new billionaires at Moderna alone. Uh, so now with this year, as uh, the pandemic is now in the rearview mirror, there are less people taking the vaccine. It really seems that this misinformation fighting effort is an e is an effort to use the kind of crisis we've had around public, you know, misinformation and, and these debates around speech uh, to corral people and to push them into taking a product that's necessary for their profits. This is this is really kind of a dangerous blurring of lines between public health um, communications and corporate marketing. Mm. Lee, thank you so much for your reporting and for joining us today. Thank you.